Thank you so, so much. I am delighted to welcome Sally Krawcheck for our next discussion. Sally is the head of Elevate, formerly 85 Broads until yesterday. She's going to be talking with our very own Claudia Chan. Please welcome them. All right. By the way, I just heard that hashtag she summoned is trending in New York City. Woo! So keep on, keep on tweeting. So I am so honored to be here talking to the Sally Krawcheck, um, <laughs> the amazing Sally. And I wanted to start off first by saying congratulations. Thank um, it's you. been exactly one year since you made the transition from Wall Street to women's empowerment. And you have a new name. We do. Yes, Elevate. Tell us all about we, it. We, um, the Professional Women's Network, uh, that I invested in about a year ago uh, was the cheekily named 85 Broads, uh, mm -hmm. which was a great name for years. It was the Goldman Sachs Informal Females Alumni Network. But over the years, the network grew to now 34,000 women across industries and around the world, and so we'd outgrown the name, as you might imagine. Uh, so we changed it to Elevate a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. E L L E, get it? Yes, get it. <laughs> I do. You know what it, what that means in French? She. Woo! I like that. There we go. <laughs> so anyway, so we changed the name a couple of days ago, relaunched um, the website. Didn't relaunch, rebuilt. Uh, for those of you who are closer to the front, are saying that woman looks exhausted. Um, <laughs> you try to relaunch one of these websites, um, and we have sort of some new offerings. So it's really super exciting. Great. And actually, we've got a lot of Elevate members in the audience, right? Raise your hand. Yeah, look at that. Woo! There we go. So uh, these women yes. recognize that networking is the number one unwritten rule of success in business. Mm. And that's something that I think they teach the gentlemen uh, perhaps in college um, or in <laughs> high school. But we often don't get that lesson. And the research shows that when women get into, women and men get in their 30s, mid-30s, and as the guys start to move ahead, we know many of the reasons for that, but it's not that the guys are just better at their jobs than the women are. It's that they have those connections, and a lot of those loose connections, which are nerves that go out in the world and bring them back information. And so networks within your companies are important, and networks outside your companies are important, so that you'll hear about you know, the latest startup that's threatening your company, the RFP, mm -hmm the talented young person who's looking for a job, the competitive landscape, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what these members, the Elevate members recognize. Great. So, you know, actually, so just to step back for yeah. a second about the whole story of the sort of left field surprising decision of this, one of the Wall Street's most powerful women purchasing a women's empowerment organization and network. What were the series of connections and events that led you to make that decision? Well, you know, I started my career as a research analyst, and, and I tell folks that I still actually consider myself to be a recovering research analyst. <laughs> um, I spent time after uh, leaving Merrill Lynch um, with glasses of wine and time alone, and spent a lot of time, frankly, thinking about what some of the causes of the financial crisis were, mm -hmm. and uh, went through all the stuff, you know, more capital, more liquidity, this with risk, you know, all the things that could have been done, which you hear about all the time on financial TV. And one of them that kept popping up in my personal experience was diversity, diversity of perspective and thought. And then when there are more diverse individuals around a table, you don't necessarily, you don't make faster decisions, but from my experience, you make more effective decisions. Then I started to dig through the research and all the research, I mean, I think that, you know, maybe I found two little pieces of research that were negative, but I found tons of research that said that greater gender diversity leads to higher returns on equity, lower risk, lower volatility, greater, greater, greater client focus, greater long-term focus, more, more innovation. And the one piece of research that I saw is that more diverse teams outperform more capable teams. I said, geez, Louise. Mm. And more diverse leadership teams have lower gender pay disparities through companies. And I said, you know what? This is something nobody's talking about with regards to the financial crisis, but this matters all over the place. And so how can I, given that I've had this you know, amazing career, been given amazing opportunities, what can I do now in this next phase of my career 
to have an impact. 85 Broads Now Elevate came along. I said, this is a way women can access this for the network and the education we provide to help them get ahead. And indeed, indeed, the women who are members of our network have substantially lower attrition from the workforce, from their companies, than women on average. So we are making a difference. That's incredible. So I read in an interview that you're, you're, you're saying one of the things that women have to do is ask. Yeah. And, and how, do we, how do we gain the same success without acting like men to achieve that success? And you, for 20 years, you saw women not ask for raises. Right. So how do you define, like, what would you, your advice be to women that are, I mean, it's, you know, again, 4.8% yeah. of Fortune 500 CEOs are women, and of course, the numbers just shrink as we rise. Yeah. So what is your advice? Just to, ask. Just ask. You know, if I'm, if I'm talking to a humongo group of, of men and women, one of my messages is, look, you know, so much of our messaging to diverse individuals is to act like the majority, right? And here are these tips and advice on how to do it. But, CEO, the power of diversity is diversity. So if we get everybody to act the same, we sort of lost the benefit. But as I'm sitting here talking to all of you, that's good and we need to push on it, but you need to friggin' ask for the money. You know, you can't wait till the perfect world. And here's what the, the, op the, the, the big eye opener to me, given what I did, I'm always asked to talk about women and money. And I always started with asset allocation and stock picking, right? And then it hit me not so long ago, wait a minute, we retire with two thirds of the money the guys have. Mm -hmm. Back it up. The first place to start is to ask for the raise. Because if you go from the 77 cents you're making to the dollar he's making, that is a 30% return every single year. Try to make that in the stock market. Try to make that in the bond market. Mm. You can't. The best return a woman can get is to ask for the raise. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And so, which, which leads me into the new ta the tagline for Elevate, yep. which is invest in yourself. Can you define you know, obviously the mission of Elevate, but what does that mean? What does invest in yourself mean? Well, in your and it's terms? invest in women, right? And it's the right. recognition that, again, for me, coming from a financial background, you know, they're moving gender diver greater gender diversity is a very nice to do. It really is, and we all need to be behind it, but it's a good business thing to do. And the research indicates that a person investing in themselves, a woman investing in herself, by the networking, by asking for the raise, et cetera, is a good return on her investment. You know, and we do so many things for other people, right? We run around for other people. But doing this for yourself, you know, helps, helps in turn because you have greater financial resources for your family, which matters. Yeah. And then investing in other women. Um, so many of these women, when we talk to the Elevate Network members, the majority of our women said that they wanted to invest back in other women. It's, we're, we're naturally mm. altruistic that way. Yeah. I think you, I remember you saying that that women are much more comfortable negotiating for others than they are for themselves. Well, they negotiate as effectively, more effectively than mm -hmm. gentlemen for others, but when we negotiate for ourselves, mm -hmm. we hold back. Men go, the research shows men go into a negotiation, their main objective in the negotiation is to win. Women go into a negotiation and our major objective in a negotiation is to maintain the relationship with the other person. Mm -hmm. That is true, right? So there's, there's a happy medium mm -hmm. between those two because um, there can be win-wins, but when we negotiate for other people, our, you know, we go, right. right? But not as much for ourselves. Right. No, that's great. So that sort of brings me into the conversation inside corporations and how, even for She Summit and, and, and how getting corporations to think about investing internally in programs right. to get more women to stay in the workforce and compete and ask for right. those higher positions. How do we get companies, how do we change their mentality? I mean, what do you, if you have the year yeah. of every C, male CEO, what, what do we say to them? Well, it's, there, I have attacked this through the research. And, and again, the research, um, whether it's causation, correlation, enormous coincidence, has spoken. And, I believe that CEOs and senior management and middle management of all the folks I talk to really very much are engaged in this and see the purpose of it. But what happens with all of us, I, I was actually saying this morning, when I go to make a promotion, and particularly if I'm under stress, you know, it's always interesting because the person who always looks best to me is a middle-aged, bottle blonde, 
financial services, southern woman. Me, right? <laughs> I was like, I think she would be great at doing that. And so we have these subtle biases that go into place. So what are we doing? What am I doing? Well, we had another announcement yesterday. Yes, please tell us. And uh, yesterday we announced, um, same name, different company. Um, we announced a joint venture with PAX World called the PAX Elevate Global Women's Index Fund. This is a mutual fund. It is the first and only fund of its kind which invest in the top approximately 400 companies in the world for advancing women based on quantitative measures, percent of women in senior management, percent of women on the board, whether there's a woman CEO, woman CFO, et cetera, but the, pro the, the greatest weight is the percent of women. The companies in the fund, which is available now, um, are 31% of their boards are women, 24% of their senior management teams are women versus an 11% average. I was telling Claudia backstage when I started this, you know, when we were looking at the research, I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be interesting. Are these gonna be a bunch of granola eating companies, a bunch of knitting, you know, a bunch of sort of out here <laughs> companies? No, the, the, in the, the top companies are the PepsiCo's, the GE's, the Procter's and Gamble's, the Yahoo's, you know, the Toronto Dominion Banks, world-class companies mm -hmm. doing business in, in world-class ways in which their excellence they achieve is part of that is the diversity, whether driven by part of global, very broad based. Um, and, and we thought, what the heck? And, and we hear, we're hearing from women that 77% of women globally are saying to the financial services industry, recent research from Center of Talent Innovation, you know what, guys, I want to invest for a fair return and in line with things that are important to me. The gentlemen say, I want to invest for, for the return. The women are saying, false choice, I want to invest for both, and there are not a lot of means to do this. Right. So with, I mean, this is huge. This is extremely disruptive. <laughs> the first fund ever first to ever. do this. And I mean, it's, it's important, obviously, for what it is, but also, hopefully, it's starting a trend. Yeah. Like, in terms of the, the overall landscape of our, of our economy and and just corporations, I mean, what, what do you, what would be your dream to see, you know, in, in terms of how things will change, um, you know, in this lifetime, you know, and do you see, do you see us really making that progress? Do you see those numbers I, changing well, guys, faster based on know, all the momentum that's happening right now? I, I've been a little bit cranky about this. Um, I'll tell you because my, my, and I don't want to end on a, a, a tough mm -hmm. note, but look, my industry, the financial services industry, and I, I built, I loved my career there. I loved all but six minutes of my career in financial services. Um, you know, look, guys, we, we, uh, of the industries out there, we would all agree financial services, white, male, and middle-aged. And as I've said, we went in the downturn, white, male, and middle-aged, and we came out whiter, maler, and middle-aged. <laughs> and, and I think that if we, ha and a lot of those companies, by the way, are not in the fund as a result mm -hmm. of it, because they don't rank. But you know, I think if we took it, taken a step back, we said that would have been an opportunity for progress. What I'm optimistic about is that we're hitting this different ways. And we're having a national and global conversation, Claudia, driven in good part by you, by this summit, by the great work Cheryl Sandberg is doing, by the great work Anne-Marie Sla Slaughter is doing, by the little impact I'm trying to have. You actually have individuals who've had some degree of success who's saying, stand up, this matters, mm. right? And I was talking to, um, I was actually talking to Cheryl the other day, and I said, you know, it struck me, we need to play our positions, right? And so my position here, given my financial services background, mm. made all the sense in the world for me, based on what I'm hearing from all of you, to, to, to launch this fund. So my last question yeah. is, you know, you have been through some of the hardest things that most people dread. I'm going to just take it. She's asking this with 34 <laughs> seconds left, by the way. This um, clock is ticking it, away, yes. You know, I love to yeah. put ourselves in these situations. But so, I mean, it, you know, head of, chief financial officer of Citibank yeah. and 
a head of wealth management at Bank of America Merrill Lynch, and yet you were obviously ousted from those two companies, and yet you have been bounced back and propelled, yeah. it has propelled you towards this greater purpose as a female leader. I mean, like, are you just fearless at this point? I mean, what? No, not at all, <laughs> not at all. I was up at, I was up at 2 a.m. Um, this morning worrying about failure. Mm. I mean, I woke up and said, this is, oh my gosh, you know, the new name, what if people don't like it? What if the website crashes? What if nobody can find the fund to buy? What if nobody buy? Oh my gosh, right? So I actually went through this. So no, not at all. Um, I don't know, look, but I've had my past experiences inform me. I was fired from Smith Barney. Um, for years, if you had asked me, Sally, did you get fired because you were a female? My answer would have been, Claudia, stop. No, no, <laughs> stop it. Don't go there. And I've come to the conclusion I wasn't fired as a woman because I had different body parts, but that instead, I advocated and eventually was successful in returning client funds from during the downturn where we had accidentally missold funds. And I was fired for that. And it came to me that maybe, you know, that if I read the research about women and the client focus and, you know, the guilt and everything, that that informed that action that then got me fired. And that there was that diversity of thought and perspective that I think we should be embracing, yes. rather than saying, okay, you're thinking, you're advocating differently, get the heck out of here. So what I've done is I've allowed that to, to really inform what I'm doing and to move on. And, and I've just got this, pers first of all, I think it's all fun. Even when it's not fun, it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, I've said, even when I got fired, I was having fun, because I just am so grateful. I mean, like, how cool is this that we're here today? Yes. I mean, seriously, that we have this opportunity. <laughs> really? Yes. So it's this sense of enormous gratitude plus insecurity that, come on, let's admit yep. it, right? <laughs> come on, guys. But it's this sense of enormous gratitude I have um, and a sense of responsibility that I have, frankly, to, to you and to all of you um, to be working towards something that's a better place. So thank Amazing. you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Sally. Okay.